Today, we're ranking the top 10 best sets from 2022 from a collector's perspective. What's up, guys? We're back with another video. We're doing something that I've never done before. We are ranking the top 10 sets of the year. But from my perspective, which is more of a collector slash pack opening perspective versus like these other videos, like House of Champs made one. It's basically just like, is this set the best for like metagame and all that stuff? He did a little collector like addition in there as well. But we're doing specifically from collectors and pack openers like a lot of you guys that watch me you guys open packs or you guys collect stuff for the most part some of you guys play as well but we're gonna give a little twist and we're gonna see what were the best sets this year our giveaway for today will be specific to whoever wins the giveaway whatever you think was the best set this year let me know in the comments i will personally get you a box of that set i don't actually have any of like some of the sets anymore so we're just gonna have to like send you the money and then you can buy it or whatever so that's how it's gonna work just like the video be subscribed turn on notifications let me know your absolute number one set of the year for whatever reason it doesn't have to be from a collector's perspective just whatever you would want to win all right let's hop right into it we are going to be using the tcg player price guide just to look over some cards and stuff like that we're going to start with a special award this year's stinkiest set of the year award goes to drum roll please Hidden Arsenal Chapter 1. All right, and as we look at Hidden Arsenal Chapter 1, you can see exactly why it's so bad. The top card in the set is $4.91. Yeah, $4.91 for the absolute best card. This set was never hyped. No one ever really liked it. Uh, there was a skill drain in it for a while that was expensive. Stratos, I guess, is kind of cool. But this set overall was an absolute bust. It was not a good set. It was one of those ones where they put it in the weird shaped box. I think it may have had dice as well. I can't remember, but this set overall just had absolutely zero value and just only a couple of cool cards. It's basically the Stratos and the Skill Drain. And I guess if you're using whatever Naturia sun Sunflower is for, uh, $4. So yeah, not a lot of value in this. So not really much to open if you're a collector. So, you know, what are we going to collect out of here? I guess the Stratos, maybe the Skill Drain. Uh, and then if you're pulling for value, there's none there. So you're basically, gonna, you're going to lose money every time you open this pretty much so this was a super rough set i wanted to throw it in as the stinkiest set of the year so hashtag stinkiest set of the year in the comments let's go on to the top 10 at number 10 i have ots tournament pack 18 spoiler alert i only had one ots pack in here and that's because this year it was 18 19 and 20 none of them were that great for like collectability and stuff like that this one i specifically picked because i did want to put the top ots set in here it's a little borderline if it should even be in the top 10 it's not that great but i personally really like zeus i think it looks really cool while it is sort of like a meta card it also i feel like could become collectible just because it's really iconic to people playing it and also like i've never actually really used zeus myself i just think the artwork looks really really good so good artwork high rarities like starlight and ultimate rare i think it'll become fairly collectible even when it falls out of favor like i don't even think people are really using it too much right now fusion destiny is a classic i think because if you're like a collector who doesn't play a lot you've probably still used fusion destiny and stuff like that you've used like the uh, red eyes fusion you're probably played dragoon you've probably played dpe they're like the noob cards that we use so fusion destiny still pretty cool and of course invoke dogmatica it's a deck i actually used in a tournament so i have a soft spot for ecclesia i really like the ultimate rare starlight is worth way more but still this is a 38 dollar card value ultimate rare just saying and then of course we have to throw in our favorite card where is he mind you the Ten Thousand hands we love to talk about him from invasion of chaos he did get a reprint in here so we got to throw him in here there's also a couple other good cards like token collector was pretty good for like meta gameplay and as I said, we're doing for collectors, but my rankings do still consider like the meta value. It'll just be like worth less in terms of like what where I'm putting the set. So while token collector is a meta card, I, it still helps the set a little bit, even though we're really looking for collectability here. And then of course the dasher is part of the DPE package. So, and oh yeah, don't forget about baby Sarasaurus, dinosaurs. I played that as well in a, in a tournament. So I do like this set. I don't think it's that amazing. And also it's an OTS set. So like you can't usually open a lot of those packs, but I like it at number 10. Next up, we have legendary duelist season three. This is similar to the Hidden Arsenal set, except it's like actually kind of decent. So inside each of these, you got a die and the die had different rarities. Like there was like the Dark Magician Girl die, the Dark Magician die. And then there was some more common ones like the Elemental Hero ones, which that was a really cool addition to like get in every single box, which is always nice. Then they have these really cool Dark Magician reprints, Elemental Hero reprints. There's Evil Hero stuff. So it's a lot of like fan favorite stuff. That's really, really nice. And there's not a lot of like meta gameplay stuff in here, which is, you know, that's not what we're looking for. But there is some really nice collectible 
stuff like the Magician Souls, the Dark Magician. So if you're playing the Dark Magician deck, which a lot of collectors usually hop, when you hop into the meta game, you're like, how do I play Dark Magician? How do I play Blue Eyes? This set here gave you a lot of good stuff for playing like Dark Magician, so which is really cool. There's also a Dark Magician girl in here, which is always really, really nice. Cursed Necrofear got a reprint. So it was just a lot of really decent stuff for collectors. While there's not anything huge value, which is like what we want to see as collectors, like how do we pull the high rarity? There wasn't any of that in here, so that's why it's down at number nine. But I did think the Dark Magician support deserved to be on the list. All right, on to number eight. We have a set that doesn't have a lot of collectible stuff, but was a super strong set. This is the Grand Creators. The Grand Creators is a collector rare set, which if you guys watch a lot of my videos, you know, I don't really like the setup of those sets. I like collector rares, but I don't like the boxes that they're in. And the specific reason is you only get three ultras per box and then you get occasionally a collector rare. So you're opening 24 packs. You're really pulling three cards for the most part. Occasionally, there will be a super rare something but not usually and then you might get a collector rare, which would be four out of 24 so there's not a lot of pulls like normally if you're opening like an old school booster box you get four supers and two ultras that's six pulls maybe even a secret that's seven so getting three pulls it's like you're opening a lot of packs you're not getting a lot of stuff but this was by far the best collector rare set of the year and if we're looking at like meta impact this like would be one of the best sets of the year but because we're mostly looking at collector stuff there's not a lot in here there's like torrential tribute which is really cool solemn strike while it is also sort of a meta card it's also kind of an old card at this point it's like six seven years old so kind of a collector card emergency teleport same thing with that meta relevant but it's also from duelist genesis so pretty cool to see a collector rare there the rest of it i mean i guess you could say in zectors maybe if you played back in 2010 2011 whenever that was uh when in zectors were really good you were excited about those uh, i think they kind of flopped but they still did get some nice high rarity cards but when we're looking at the meta relevant stuff we have the brave stuff we have the punk stuff the exo sister stuff all that stuff was really successful and had like really solid value in terms of like pulling the stuff which also is part of what we're talking about when we're opening packs even if it's not for like a collector's purpose if you're opening a box you do want to pull like a card that'll get your value back and that is another thing that we're considering and here there was a lot of really good cards there's like ride of aramisir there's water enchantress i mean there's just all these really strong value cards and even if you go to the ultras when this first came out the ride of aramisir ultra rare was 60 bucks so you would pull that and make your money back on the box there was like the ogre dance is a 21 dollar uh oh that's a collector Rare, but it used to be a $20 ultra rare before it got the uh, the collector rare. But some of this stuff has been reprinted. We have to keep that in consideration. But I'm talking about when it first came out as well as like now. So we're kind of like averaging them together. But this was a really strong set overall. Not a lot of stuff that you take and like grade or something like that for like collecting. But you might actually keep some of this stuff just because it was like iconic in your meta deck and stuff like that. So I think this has a solid spot at number eight. And if it was a meta list, it'd be even higher. At number seven, we have the 2022 Tin of Pharaoh Gods. So this set was pretty solid overall because it had a lot of really strong reprints one of the problems with it though was they like half and short printed a lot of the cards which is good and bad it's bad because you don't get it as often it's good because the value like usually stays higher because they're harder to pull so it's like a, a give and take it's kind of a good thing for collectors because then you know you actually have a high rarity card or not a high rarity but high value card to search for there's not a lot of like high value though the most expensive is the 37 dollars pot of prosperity but we also have the collector stuff in here which is the three new artwork which is really awesome and by new i mean from the ocg i believe they're already in the ocg we got them in the tcg so we're talking about the blue eyes white dragon the dark magician girl and of course the red eyes so it was really cool to get like some of those cards finally in the artwork because i think the dark magician girl artwork is really good the blue eyes artwork is I, it's not my favorite one but i think it's decent and i really like the red eyes i think it looks amazing so that was really cool to have these thrown into the tins i know a lot of people that are not collectors like Ugh, more dark magician more or not dark magician this time but more blue eyes more red eyes but you can't get enough when it's new artwork it's really cool stuff and then of course the dark red eyes dark dragoons in here and that's a that's a collector card even though it was used in the meta dark magician as well as the red eyes put together so that's a collector card and then all these awesome like prismatic secret rares like the lightning storm are really good so i thought it was a solid set overall but not having like a huge chase card definitely held it back a little bit and then the, the short printing is like it's kind of weird. So let, that's number seven. I think it's pretty decent. Let's go on to number six. All right, number six, we have another set that is very strong, an amazing meta set, but not necessarily a collector set, but it kind of had to be on the list because it was so good. We have Power of the Elements. This was one of the absolute best sets of the year because of the archetypes that came out of it. Not a lot of collector cards in here. I do like the DPE Starlight. A lot of people were not happy about this card being in here because they thought it should have been in Burst of Destiny last year, which it should have, to be honest. But I mean, we either didn't 
didn't get it and then didn't get it at all later on or we didn't get it and they made it later so i know they were like cashing out a little bit on the set but like they didn't even need it like the set was amazing so i think it was just a little bit of a cherry on top to have the dpe starlight and it was something i searched for for like i think seven or eight cases for us to pull it and it's a really beautiful card so that i think is the best collector rare card in this set just because it's like e heroes it was like used in the meta as well so that's going to be iconic for people so i think that card will age pretty well really nice card there but the rest of it i mean really no uh collector rare cards in here at all but the tier elements and the sprite stuff has been so big throughout this year that everyone who played in this year like in like 10 years they'll remember the tier element stuff like oh yeah remember that tier zero format remember when sprite came out and the tier elements in the same set and they're all amazing so that's it's gonna hold up well i think in terms of like people remembering this set and it being really really good and then also we have to mention the value you could pull out of here because the value when this first came out this this planet thing was 80 dollars sprite blue was a hundred dollars slayer was like 50 i mean there was crazy secret rare value and then an ultra rare sprite elf tw still 20 dollars back then it was i think around 20 as well so there was some good ultra rare stuff there was some amazing secret rare stuff then there's starlights that you could pull which is always fun even if it's like a meta starlight pulling a starlight rare is still awesome for collectors and you want to grade it because it's like wow that was really hard to pull it's one in 25 boxes or whatever one in 100 for my specific one that i wanted or whatever 125 actually but yeah so this set overall just a really strong set honestly could maybe even be up higher but because there's really maybe one ish collector card in here that's why i have it down at number six but still really really awesome set and and I, it was fun for me to open up and I really enjoyed our time with Power of the Elements. So had to make it on the list at number six. Let's go to number five. So we have Darkwing Blast. Now you might hear that and be like, hmm, there weren't any collector cards in that set at all. And there really wasn't. Not not many at all in terms of collector cards. I think there might have been one. What was it? I guess you could consider the Blackwing Dragon somewhat collectible, but it already has an ulti and a ghost. So we searched for it. We still have not pulled it, by the way. So we want to pull that. Not super big in terms of like the collector space, but I think it's a decent card for that. But this has to be one of of the best value sets I've opened. I would say the number one value set I've opened this year. And I'm not talking about the very first day, like when the prices are crazy of every set. This set, like even a week or two, a month later, is still holding crazy value with the cards. And that's because there was a super rare that's like $15. There's a super rare that's like $8. So that's two cards that you pull very often, like usually one of each per box. Then you have ultra rare that's $70 right now. It was like 60 on release, maybe 50. I don't know, 50 to 70. So crazy value in an ultra rare. You pull four ultra rares per box. So you have a great chance to pull it. And then there's another ultra rare worth over 20. So the unicorn, the cast year unicorn, as well as the cast year of Fenrir. I mean, they're both crazy money. Then you go into the secret rares. Secret rares overall, not great. I mean, there's not like a huge lineup of amazing secret rares, but the Lubellion's 50 bucks. So there's still a big secret rare in there. And then in the starlights, the rule closes over 300 bucks. So that's solid value. Then of course the Blackwing Dragon, which is a cheap card, by the way. So cool for collectors. So this set was just such good value. Like opening it up, you would almost always pull like at least like $30 worth of cards. Like it was like the absolute worst case scenario. So this set was just awesome for that. And as an opener, like not necessarily a collector, but just opening packs. When you open packs, you want to have potential. Like you want to feel like, okay, I can actually pull something good in every pack. And that's how this set feels. So it was a lot of fun to open. That's why I've opened it multiple different streams and stuff like that. And even though it doesn't have a ton of collectors, the open opening side of this made this such a fun set I had to put it at number five and it also has some nice you know meta relevance as well because the cash tier stuff's just good and don't forget about of course the rule close I mean tier elements tier zero so just really really solid stuff number five for sure I, I had to put it in the top five so let's move on to number four maybe we'll actually have some collector cards in the next one at number four we have one that's somewhat debatable I watched house of champs video before this and uh, he was talking about this set he had this set really low on his ranking ghost from the past the second haunting so the reason he had it low was because he thought the set failed based on the ghost rares he thought because they were in bad condition that made the set a failure i had a little bit of a different perspective on that so let's go into what i like about this set first of all we have nine ghost rares i mean that is in and of itself enough to make the set hype ghost rares didn't even exist in the tcg for like five years so them bringing these back and yeah, of course they did ghost from the past one but they even upped the ghost rares from five to nine in this one made it even more exciting they made them easier to pull you're usually getting one to seven per case occasionally some people got zero i know if you're watching this and you got zero that really hurt for me to say one to seven I know I, I feel you guys I didn't have it on this set but I had it on grand creator so I know what you mean but it was possible to pull multiple ghost rares and these ghost rares are not just any ghost rares they're one through six are amazing I mean we got dark magician girl blue eyes white dragon we got red eyes black dragon we've got cyber dragon blue eyes ultimate dragon and the dark arm dragon all of those are insanely nostalgic awesome collectible cards there are a couple issues I think the ghost rare foiling is definitely lacking on these compared to some of the older ghost rares it definitely does not look as good as some other cards that you could pull but I still do like ghost rares 
and I think they're really cool. John's point about it having bad, you know, scuffing on the back and not being in good condition, that goes both ways. First of all, it's a bad thing. If you if you pull one and it's like lightly played, it's like, oh, are you kidding me? I really opened all this and got a garbage ghost rare. Now, if we go to the PSA grading side, this actually makes this set interesting because if the cards came out pristine, perfect, you grade them, it's like Pokemon, you get like a BGS black label 10 every time you grade them. It's like, well, what's the point of grading them? When they come out like this and they're all damaged and stuff, it actually makes the pop really low. It's really hard. It's kind of like the Wayne Dragon Raw with the Ghost Rare. It was all scratched up. Having like a PSA 10 of that card is extremely rare. It makes it so a card that's like massively printed is actually super rare because you have one of the few that's actually in great condition. And that's what kind of happened with this set. A lot of these, I think it was Blue Eyes. Does that still have zero tens? It might still have zero tens. I'm not sure. Uh, but there, it's a very low pop to get a Blue Eyes White Dragon in PSA 10. So that makes that card actually super cool. And like, okay, maybe I could open that set. Hope for the perfect Blue Eyes, you know? There's the slight chance of pulling the Blue Eyes, which is already a, a cool chase. You're like, oh, what if I get the Blue Eyes? You get it. It's $150 card. You're like, wow, that's awesome. Then there's the next level. What if it's in perfect condition? What if I graded a PSA 10? Then it's going to be worth, you know, $2,000, $3,000. So it has like a double layer for collectors, which I think is actually a cool thing. I'm not saying that we want the, all the cards to come out in terrible condition. I know Tim, aka Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube, a lot of times when he sees uh, factory issues, he's like, awesome. Now, now the cards will be really hard to get in good condition. And he like gets excited. So I know some people actually are happy when they come out in bad condition. So it's a, we it's a weird thing. So you could be on either side of the fence. You might want them, them to be perfect. So you have a nice card when you pull it, or you might want that you have the chase to get that super rare, perfect condition card. So I thought that was an interesting perspective on it. And I think that it can be a good thing but I'm not gonna say it is a great thing for it to be bad condition for these high rarity cards. This set overall, I've talked a lot about this set so far, we're kind of rambling, but it was kind of a disappointment in some ways because the value outside of the ghost shares was not there. That's why I don't have it up at the top because you would think at the beginning of the year when you saw this lineup of ghosts, it was gonna be the absolute best set and it didn't turn out to be the best set, but I still think it's relevant enough to be at number four with like Dark Magician Girl, Blue Eyes Ghost Rares and stuff like that. So let's move on. We've spent enough time on this one. Make sure to let me know your opinion in the comments. All right, on to number three. We we have Battles of Chaos. And when this first set first came out, I don't think anyone would have said this would be like in the top three sets of the year. I still think people are not probably not saying that, but I'm personally going to put in the top three for multiple reasons. This set not only had Dark Magician support, it had a Blue Eyes Starlight Rare card, the Blue Eyes Jet Dragon, which is one of my favorite cards ever made. Really cool looking card. It also had a couple of meta relevant cards like the Guardian Chimera and the Dark the Dark Charmer, which not only is a super rare, which is easy, easily accessed, it also has a high rarity Starlight, the best Starlight in the Set. As you guys can tell, it's $530. I have one for sale, by the way. So if you want one, hit me up. Then they also had the randomly inserted Dark Magician, which I think when it first came out, people were hyping up. I was, I'm sorry, I was one of them. It was an accident. I'm, I, I was off on the ratios, okay, guys? So people were hyping it up. And then it was disappointing because it was easier to pull than people thought. The price went way down. I think it was up at like, what, $800 and went down to like 100 or something. So now it's at what, whatever it is, $92. This was still a really awesome card. And I think that because of like the negative press of like people thinking it was worth worth more, aka me, and then it not being worth so much and not being so hard to pull. It kind of made people have like a sour taste for this card. But I think when you look back, this is a really, really awesome card because have we ever seen a randomly inserted bonus card? It's not like an extra card, but it's like instead of a common, you could pull a dark magician. It was one of the coolest things ever because like normally when you're finding high rarity, it's just in the rare slot. This was not in the rare slot. It was like at the back of the car of the pack. Sometimes it was in the front of the pack. It was all over the place. You never knew like you had to open every single card in the set to make sure that it was not there. Like some people were putting them in their bulk and stuff like that, which you might say that's a bad thing because then we lost it. But I think it was just cool. It was like a lottery ticket. Like it was like it randomly inserted lottery things. It was it just felt like a mystery box almost. It was really fun. So I think that it was a cool idea and I hope they do it again with some other cool card like like maybe a blue eyes or something like that. And oh my goodness, I just noticed the Fluanderies and Advent Adventure Ultra Rare is now $31. So we've got an Ultra. I mean, it's no cash tier of Fenrir, but $31 for an Ultra. I mean, there's some value value in this set. Honestly, it's not too bad. When it first came out, it seemed like a flop because of the whole Dark Magician thing, but I think this this set has aged super well, and I think it will continue to age well because of the Dark Magician stuff and just other really cool cards. I mean, wow. I think it's doing well. I'm surprised at where I have this on the list, but let me know what you guys think. I mean, do you guys still like Battles of Chaos? Pretty fire set, in my opinion. I think we opened like eight cases of it. Okay, number two. We've been going on for a long time. I didn't expect to talk this much, but sometimes I just talk a lot. We have the Battles of Legend Crystal Revenge, the newest set, I think, to date. It's a pretty new set. This set I really like for numerous reasons, but there's a few drawbacks that kept it from being number one. This set has the best lineup of collectible starlights by far 
ever absolutely loaded there's nine starlights this is our first time ever having more than five so that was really cool they also increased the rates and yeah we're gonna get to it us versus euro but in the us cases you're opening 1.1 cases to get one starlight it used to be you'd have to open 2.1 i think was the ratio so it's like a whole case easier to pull a starlight amazing that's awesome for the us Sorry, Euro guys. I think it was like 1.5 cases for you guys. So it was much, much harder. Very annoying. I would be very frustrated if I was a Euro person, you know, someone from Europe opening Euro cards. If you have to open that many more packs to get a Starlight, it's just a bummer. And it feels like you're kind of like paying more to get less. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I hope that they correct that and don't do that in the future. I also don't like how they're splitting up the Secret Pharaoh Rares and Ultra Pharaoh Rares either, but we'll get into that in the next set, number one. But this set was amazing. Access Code Talker, while it's not like super collectible, amazing meta card, $575 Starlight. So big value. Then we've got Got, of course, Exodia. All five pieces. Really amazing. Super Poly, another meta card. Then we have Borload Savage Dragon, another meta card. Then we have Yada. Yada Garasu got a Starlight. It was banned till this year. Now I got a Starlight. Blackwing Armor Master, really, really cool card as well. I mean, it it's, yeah, I, I, I was disappointed when I pulled it, but it's still a decent card overall. And it's somewhat collectible because the Blackwing stuff, I mean, progression series and memories and all that stuff. But just having a full Exodia set and Yada, that right there, amazing collectible Starlights. Because normally we get one collectible Starlight per thing. We get six here. So that's pretty awesome. Then of course, there's some good reprints in here as well. I mean, we've got Tomb Blackluster Soldier. That's a collectible card right there tune black all the tune stuff is very collectible we got celine that that needed a reprint we've got of course the borlo savage regular let's see more chaos stuff so the chaos space is big the tune stuff fusion destiny again i mean this set was okay dd crow another reprint the doodle stuff people really like that just a lot of good stuff there's also edison reprints in here which is always big i'm a big fan of edison reprints overall a pretty decent set i think without the starlights the set is very average but the starlights were so awesome in my opinion i had so much fun opening for exodia we still need that left arm by the way that i had to put it up here i I think maybe you could argue like it could be bumped down. Maybe even Battles of Chaos could beat it out. But I think the Exodia Starlight set, it's really hard to not put that up there for collectors and stuff like that. However, opening this set, the value is not that great. That kind of made me hesitant to put it this high because a lot of the cards are worth like $2, They're like nice $2 secret rares, but they don't have a ton of value. So let me know what you think about this one. I had this one up top and then I realized there's no way I could put it above the number one set. And of course, our number one set is Magnificent Mavens, the set I always call Majestic Mavens. This set was amazing for so many reasons. First of all, amazing reprints. Let's just go look at these reprints real quick. Evenly matched, triple tactics, talents lightning storm infinite impermanence yeah none of those have anything to do with collecting but when you're opening up and you get these value cards they're all ten dollar cards you can get them fairly easily that's pretty awesome then there's the ashizu stuff also doesn't matter for collectors but it's good value for your openings. You have uh, meta relevant stuff that's really good. Then you have Harpy's Feather Duster. This is actually iconic. That's a very nice TP8 artwork reprint, which is amazing. Apollosa's in here. You've got Black Cluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. I think this is a collectible card, to be honest. There's all high rarity stuff until now. So if you're looking for this card for your collection, you want it cheap. Here it is. It's a great card. It's really cool artwork. Skill Drain, classic card if you're playing old school formats. I mean, there's all the entire Sword Soul decks in here if you're going to play that. Now let's get to the collectible stuff. First of all, when you're opening these up, you get a guaranteed box of sleeves in every single mini box, which is insane. I said box, but I mean pack of sleeves. That's instant value. I still have like 180 left that I've been using, and I'm not going to run out of sleeves to like pack orders in a very long time. So that's just cool value. Second of all, Ultra and Secret Pharaoh Rare. So first of all, Ultra versus Secret Pharaoh Rare. The Euro gets Ultra, we get Secret. I don't know why they're split up. I actually like Secret better, but for some reason, Ultras are worth more. I don't know why, but both pretty cool. And not only did they use this new rarity, I mean, they technically used it before with like, what was it, like the God cards at some point, And it was really, it was a bust in King's Court, but they did a lot better this time. They look a lot better. The secrets look amazing. I think the ultras also look pretty good because they put some of the foiling in the front. They also have classic cards. They have meta cards. I mean, look at this, Dark Magician Girl, Silvori Calcos, Necro Valley, Red Eyes Black Dragon, Reinforcement of the Army for old formats. We got Blue Eyes White Dragon. I haven't actually seen that one yet. That's pretty cool. Change of Heart, Gravekeeper's Trap for the newer stuff. Elemental Hero Neos got a high rarity. Finally, it's so cool. Triple Tactics Talents, it's a nice meta card. We've got Neos again. It's, it's confusing because they have Secret and Ultra on here, so we got multiples, but Black Hoser Soldier, another high rarity card, as if it needed that. We have the Lightning Storm, we got Toon Kingdom. There's 18 different cards in this rarity, which is so cool. And then you have the Ultra and the Secret, so if you, you could split them up and have two different ones. I don't know, I think it's a really, really cool idea. I don't necessarily think this is the best rarity ever. I like Starlight a lot more. I like Ghost Shares more, even though the new Ghost Shares, they're getting worse. I think they could definitely up those. I like 
ultimate rares more, but still just having this new rarity, I think is really cool. It's subtle, it's nice looking, and just having an option for a high rarity card in the set makes collectors and pack openers want to open it up. And not only do they have these, they're holding big value. I mean, like, look, $400 for the Seal of Orichalcos, you know, $530 for the Ultra Pharaoh's Rare Dark Magician Girl, and just insane value. Basically opening this up, you pretty much get a good card every time you open it, and then you're guaranteed to get sleeves. So you're gonna have sleeves and a few good cards every time you open this. That makes it feel really good. And while it is not necessarily a collector set straight up, it's like a collector and a meta set. It's the best of both worlds. Everyone's happy opening this set, and it's just a really awesome set. And I don't think you can really argue that this is the number one best set of the year. And then there's no weird stuff going on where like the Starlights are worse in Europe, <laughs> even though you guys got the, the Ultra Pharaohs rares, which are apparently better. So yeah, I think that this is the number one set of the year. I had fun going through these from a collector perspective. It's actually kind of hard because like there's not a lot of collector cards that they make, you know, current year, but they eventually become collector cards throughout the years. Maybe at some point, should we do like a top 10 of other years? Maybe I go back to like 2005 best collector set that ox actually might be a fun series let me know if you think that's a good idea if you guys have enjoyed the video make sure to enter the giveaway to win what you think was the best set of the year and if you enjoyed the content don't forget to subscribe to the channel shout out to toe info show daxter tomato juice jt cho tcg trusted cards puffins of doom ernesto deanda dizzy flexi boy hoppus choice 333 miss cycle james jance frankie martinez and Unatai show christopher ward ian musa junior barding mike nance mimic gecko Shadowfall, and thomas mclean thank you guys for supporting the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one Peace.